Hey, welcome to Cass Fitness. So today I'm doing something slightly different. This is not a fitness program, um, not just a class. It is for bad backs, um, for herniated discs, for sciatica caused by um, herniated discs. And I'm gonna break it down to three parts. So this part, number one, is going to be looking at how we get our neutral spine, different body positions, how we hold ourselves, how we sit into a chair. We're gonna do some resistance training and some mobility exercises. Now, it's really, really important that during this program, if you experience any pain, that is more than just a normal um, muscular pain of doing something different, that you stop. And if you have not contacted an osteo or a physio for advice, that you stop at any point. So please work at your own level. Give yourself a pain scale of one to 10 and um, only work through and progress through the levels as you complete each level confidently. So this is level one. Level two will be um, exercises that are really good for strengthening through the back. They're called the big three exercises. And um, part three will be a functional fitness program more for if you get sciatica, um, caused by your herniated disc. So I hope that you enjoy um, this program. Obviously, if you would like to contact me, then you can message me, you can ask me questions, but work at your own level. And I repeat, if you get any discomfort, any pain that is more than minimal, then please make sure you contact your GP, your osteo or your physio for advice before carrying on with this video. So let's look first of all at postural, postural differences. So we've all got our own postures that over the years um, our spine has gone into certain positions that isn't necessarily helping your back. So we'll look at a lordotic position. So when we look at um, lordosis in the back we see people with their bottom. So I'm obviously making this quite drastic bottom stuck out, spine is arching, the tummy sticks out here. So we're putting a lot of pressure on the back here, we're lengthening through these muscles and we're tight through the hip flexors. You might also find that you get a bit of curvature through the shoulders, um, causing tightness through the chest. So this is our lordotic pose. Now my pose is quite lordotic, so I need to always work at pushing forwards. The other um, po um, posture that we get is the kyphosis pose where a lot of people that work at desks curl through the shoulders. So you're working at your computer all day, reading, hunched over a desk. We become hunched through the back, so causing tightness through the chest, again putting pressure on the spine. So those are the two most common postures that we get. You may also come across scoliosis, which is a condition where the spine is in an S shape, which causes different um, muscular imbalances through the body and again causes pressure through the spine and different muscles. So we're going to try and look at um, how we can help with lordosis, kyphosis and with the disc problems that we get in the back. So we need to look at our posture. So I want you to stand with your feet, just hip width apart. So the feet, the ankles, the knees, and your hips are in a nice line. Your feet are facing forwards. You're gonna lengthen through to the top of the head. Let your shoulders relax down to your sides. And think about how you're stood. So think about whether you are stood with your bottom out whether you are stood with your shoulders hunched, what is your normal position? So my normal position is here and you can see I've got that slight lordotic posture. Now I want you to take your hands onto your hips. So your hands are at the top of the hip, the thumb is behind, the fingers are in front. Now to find our optimal position, our neutral spine, which means that we have got 
um, minimal stress through the tissues of the spine and through the discs. We're going to imagine that we've got a bowl around our hips. Now, if we push the bottom back, keep in the back long. So imagine that you've got a pole now up your back. Just hinge, push that bottom back. Your hips come forward, the water falls out through the front. If we tilt, so we push the bottom under, the hips go back, the water is going to fall out the back. So keep that back long and just let your pelvis move forwards and back. Now I want you to make the movement smaller until you imagine that your bowl of water is level. So your bowl of water is level. Soften through your knees. Like, so if you've done this and now you're locked through the knees and you're stu stiff, soften through those knees and just think about that water being level. Then release your hands to your sides. So in my neutral position, you can see I'm not so pushed out. The tummy is in. So hold your neutral position. And now I want you to think about those tummy muscles and the pelvic floor. So imagine now that you've got a belt around your waist. You've got notches on your belt from one to 10. So uncomfy it'll be, but pull that tummy button back towards your spine, or as though you're pulling that belt into number 10. Now release halfway. And again, pull that tummy in and release halfway. Now hold halfway and let the tummy come out to where you think notch three would be. So we've got our neutral spine. We've got the tummy pulled into what would be number three on our belt. Now I want you to think about your pelvic floor. So imagine in your pelvic floor you've got lifts. So you've got level one to level 10. Pull your pelvic floor all the way up to level 10. So again, you're squeezing, lifting. Try not to squeeze through the glutes. As you start to do this, you're probably going like this, squeezing through the bottom and lengthening down. So try not to use the bottom. Try to pull up and release. So now think about having your pelvic floor on lift number three. So we've got that neutral spine. Our bowl of water is level. Our tummy is in at number three. Our pelvic floor is pulled up to number three. So it may feel slightly weird, okay? It's gonna be something you're going to have to practice. But if you can get your neutral spine and train yourself to draw that tummy and pelvic floor in and up, you've got minimal stress on your supportive tissues of your spine, your discs, your facet joints, are minimally loaded. So we can work in a safe working position. Good. So if you need to practice that, please feel free to practice that as many times as you want to, to get to grips with your neutral spine. So we're gonna move on to balance. So why am I doing balance for discs and back work? Well, balance is really important, especially as we get older, we fall, we don't want to fall, we don't want to jar the backs. So if you need a chair, you can hold on to a chair, you can hold on to a wall, your choice. We're gonna try and keep it nice and simple so we're still thinking about that neutral spine. So if you find you start to balance and you go back to your postures, think about that neutral spine, nice and tall, feet in line with the hip. All we're gonna do is take one leg out to the side and back in. One leg out to the side. Now you can tap the toe to the floor. If you can work a bit harder, you can lift that foot off the floor. We're only going to do six to eight to each side. So you're lifting and down. Lifting and down. So let's go forwards and back. So tap forwards, tap back. Now again, as you tap forwards and back, I don't want to see this. Okay, I want everything to stay still apart from that hip. Squeeze into the glute. So try to make your bottom, your glute, fire up. We need strong glutes to support through that back. 
Good. And the last one that we're going to do is a circle. So you're just going to circle the leg round. So give your hip a bit of mobilisation. Let's just do four in one direction and four in the other direction. So remember you can hold on. You can keep your hands on the hips to make sure you're stabilised. Good. So just relax down. Make sure that you've got that neutral position. You're nice and tall. Give yourself a rest if you need to before going to the other side. So tap out and in. Out and in. Good. So it seems simple at the moment. Simple exercises. But it will all help in the long run for you thinking about everyday life. Good. So forwards and back. So you can do your neutral spine. As you wash up, you could pull the tummy pelvic floor in as you hoover, as you dust. Think about doing it as you shop. So let's circle. So really think about putting it into your everyday life. And the other way round. Nice. So just relax there. If you need to, relax through the feet. So while we're relaxing, let's talk about when the best time is to exercise if you've got bad backs. So if you've got bad backs, um, the best time to exercise is actually within the first couple of hours from getting up. So when we get up first thing in the morning, um, our discs are very highly hydrated. So you might find that you're taller in the morning because those discs are nice and spongy, they're hydrated. However, we are more vulnerable to injury at that time, so you must avoid forward flexion um, or full forward flexion. Um, but as we go through the day, our, we lose about 90% of our fluid in our discs. Um, so that means the best time to exercise is the first two hours uh, because of that loss of um, fluid, but just be careful and avoid any full forward flexion. So we're going to go into a bit of um, resistance training now. So resistance training is going to build up our muscles. It's going to help support the back keep that disc in but also slows down osteoporosis and if you suffer from high blood pressure it can help lower blood pressure so if you can get a band or some weights or if you haven't got weights or bands we're at home grab a couple of tin of beans and we'll do some uh, resistance training good so we're going to keep this simple because obviously we're looking at the back. We're thinking about that neutral spine. So I would like you, if you've got your tins, you're just gonna hold your tins in your hands, bring your elbows in, and you can just do your tin work. If you've got a band, take your band under both feet. So if it's uncomfortable under both feet, you could use one foot. But the reason I want both feet is because we're thinking about this neutral spine. So line up your hips, knees, ankles. Take those fingers and just check you've got your neutral spine. Lengthen through to the top of the head. Draw those elbows in. Hold your bands. And we're just doing six to eight reps of everything. So we're going to do some biceps. So try to get your tummy pulled in to a third. If six to eight reps is too much, do four, do six. It doesn't matter how many you do. Let's do one more. Nice. Good. So now let's do some shoulder raises. So if you're holding your tins, just hold your back of your hand towards the top of the room. And let's just pull up towards the shoulders and down. Keep the elbows soft, keep that neutral spine, and do not forget to breathe. So hopefully we're still all breathing. Ah, nice work. So again, just do six to eight. I mean, you can repeat it if you want to, it's your workout, but we're thinking about that back. Let's do one more. Nice. 
So take your hands in front of your hips and lift up towards the shoulders in front of you and back down. Lift up towards the shoulders and back down. So I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see that the back is staying nice and long. You're in neutral all the time. Nothing is moving except for my shoulders. So as you do the shoulders, I don't wanna see you going back, arching that back. Keep everything nice and still. Good, let's do one more. And relax. So relax there, good. So another resistance training that we're gonna do that's really good for you to do um, is a push-up. So it's gonna keep the back nice and strong. It works the abs, it works the chest, the upper back. Now, if you can't do push-ups, that's fine. You can use a wall. So I'm hoping you can see me at the back of the room. Um, I'm gonna take my hands to the wall. My hands are gonna be just over shoulder width apart my elbows are going to be in a v now you can bring yourself as close to the wall as you need to but try to have yourself with bent elbows and your feet underneath your um, hips and you're just going to bend the elbows to come towards the wall and back up so you're just bending your elbows to come towards the wall and back up. The back stays nice and long. Those abs are drawn in. If you want to work slightly harder, you can come down to the floor and you can do a box or a three quarters push up. So if you're in a box position, your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, your knees are under your hips. Take the hands slightly wider. Draw the tummy in and you're bending the elbows, you're taking the elbows out, keeping those shoulders over the wrists and bringing the chest down towards the floor and back up. Now, if you cannot do a push-up, you don't have to do them while you're staying on the wall. So you're nice and strong. Look at the back, it stays long and back up. So it's not this pushing that bottom up because look at that arch in the back. It's down and up, you do not have to go to the floor. And again, you could start with four to six, four to eight. Build the strength up. So have a relax from doing your push-ups. Just relax through the wrists, relax through the arms. So the last thing that we're gonna do for uh, just a bit of mobilization through the spine. So working through the back, we are not going to our full range of movement. So if I say we're gonna do a cat to cow, it is not a full stretch cat to cow because we don't wanna put the pressure on the back. We are literally gonna mobilize. So I want you just to just pull the tummy in, open out through the shoulders, but keep the elbows bent. And then just literally just a little um, soften through that tummy and then straight back up. So we're mobilizing through the back in a cat to cow, but we're not stretching. If doing it on hands and knees is too much, you can do it sitting, you could open and hug. Open and hug, open and hug. You can do it standing, so you could get up in the mornings, have your cup of coffee, have your breakfast. You could say we want to do a bit of mobilisation, reducing the viscosity of the spine or tissue. And we do five to eight cycles. Now look how still my pelvis is staying. Okay, I'm not here doing a full cat stretch. That pelvis is still, you're opening out and in. That neutral spine is staying all the time. Excellent work. So far, so good. So the last part of this um, session is going to be good lifting technique because I don't want you to get to the point where you've got good neutral spine, good control. We're doing all these exercises and then somebody comes to the door with a parcel and you go, brilliant, let's put that parcel up and go. It's not gonna happen, that back's gonna go. So. I've got something nice and light so I can find my washing basket, but it's gonna show you hopefully how to have good lifting technique. So, um, 
your spine needs to remain in a vertical position as much as possible we need to keep that neutral spine and if you ha ever have anything that you think not sure i can lift that or not do not try okay it is not worth putting your back out to try and lift something off the floor so you need to stand with your feet to the corners of your object one foot must always stay flat. If you can, keep both feet flat to the floor, but if you need to, you could take one foot back and have the heel just off the floor. What you want is that nice alignment. So as you come down, you're hinging from the hips, the knees are coming over the hip, now the back is staying long. Now obviously as we come down past the certain point, your back is gonna want to hinge forwards. You cannot get away from that. But try to think about taking your object, pushing that bottom back from the bottom, so you're not gonna drop it. You bring the object close into you and you lift it just to the tummy. So it's almost level with the back of where your sacral um, vertebrae is, because this is where you're going to have the best um, technique for holding the best strength. So you would hold your object there as much as you can as you're lifting. Okay, so to put the object back down, we're obviously just going to reverse it. We take the bottom back, we keep the feet, you're looking forwards, you replace the object on the floor, and we're going to come up nice and steady. Good work. Nice. So level one, complete. Good. Remember, if you haven't got the idea of that neutral spine, you can't keep those abs in, the pelvic floor up, you struggle with any of that, do it as many times as you have to before you go on to level two and start any of the exercises. Message me if you have any questions. Sorry, a lot of talking today in that video, but it is really important that you all know how to hold yourself before you do any further exercises. Have wonderful days, everyone. Let part two coming up now.